These are the new second generation Ryzen CPUs, the 27 and the 2600Xs. Now I did a full unboxing of what comes in these two press boxes, so feel free to take a look at that if you're interested, but let's get started in the full review. In this video we're going to be covering the main specs of these chips, the improvements over the last generation Zen architectures, and of course the performance and the performance differences between the two as well, so let's get into it. So let's start off with what you get inside the box, because that has actually changed a little bit. With the 2600X you get the Wraith Spire cooler, still I believe has the LED topper which is quite nice but does a pretty decent job at cooling that CPU pretty well so that's a nice thing that comes in the box and with the 2700X you actually get the Wraith Prism which is very similar to the Wraith Max that we saw last year although with a bit extra RGB if you fancy it. You of course also get the chips themselves and running through the specs of the chip starting with the higher end Ryzen 7 2700X that one is still basically the same as the last generation with 8 cores and 16 threads. You also still have two CCX units with the Infinity Fabric connecting them in between in a 4 plus 4 configuration. In terms of the caches, you have 96 kilobytes of L1 cache per core, 512 kilobytes of uh, L2 cache per core, and then 16 megabytes of shared L3 cache between all of the cores. With the 2600X, this is uh, basically the same configuration in the uh, cache structure. The only difference really here is just the core count being a 6 core 12 thread. Uh, in terms of clock speeds, the 2700X is a 3.7 gigahertz based 4.3 gigahertz boost, which is really impressive. And the 2600 is a 3.6 and 4.2 gigahertz uh, clock speed in terms of base and boost. I would also mention that the 2700X is actually a 105 watt TDP chip compared to the 95 watt that the uh, 2600 and most of the last generation Ryzen chips, even the Ryzen 7 chips were. So bear that in mind mind when you are looking for a thermal solution, but I do want to make it clear that TDP has nothing to do with actual power consumption. TDP is based uh, on effectively just a calculation that AMD do to say uh, what efficiency or how much uh, heat dissipation power the uh, your cooler should be able to dissipate. The actual power consumption for this chip actually happens to be very similar to, to the TDP, but it, that isn't always the case. For this one is about 100 to 110 watts, which is also pretty impressive considering stuff like the 8700K is easily known to pull 180 watts. In terms of the improvements with this, the Zen Plus architecture, there really isn't a massive difference. This is, there's only been a year between the Ryzen, uh, you know, Zen launch versus this Zen Plus launch, so you really can't expect massive differences. The biggest differences that AMD claimed were a 300 megahertz overall improvement on all core uh, boosts and stuff like that with the all core boost, boosts now easily sitting at 4.2 gigahertz for the 2700X. Uh, in certain scenarios, I mostly in my observations and testing only saw it boosting to about 4 gigahertz all core, but it does depend and it did boost most of the cores to over 4.2, actually normally to 4.3 gigahertz fairly regularly, so that is pretty impressive. The other big improvements with the Zen Plus architecture is actually that the cache latency, so the uh, L1, L2 and L3 caches and even the, the DRAM uh, latency has been improved dramatically with the, the biggest number here being the L2 cache latency which uh, AMD claims is 34% faster. It's something that a lot of uh, the more sort of uh, I guess in detailed reviewers covered uh, in the Zen launch with one of the things that we're kind of worried about with the, the Zen architecture and seeing this improved is actually really nice to see and uh, A means that AMD are definitely taking feedback from those sorts of reviews and also that they're just looking to improve the products in as many ways as they can so that's always uh, that's always a good sign. And the last improvements for the architecture include a 50 millivolt reduction in voltage for the same clock speeds based on this versus the last sort of standard Zen architecture and also that the new Precision Boost 2 architecture, or the, the feature I suppose, um, is just a, a little bit smoother so instead of turboing and then cutting off and then you know kind of going back to, to normal there's a little bit of a smoother response curve to it and it's also a little bit faster to act when you need it to so there's kind of a, a best of both worlds 
and in theory it just means that it provides you a little bit better performance uh, and a little bit better I guess longevity in performance um, as opposed to the more jumpy precision boost one so that's kind of nice to see. So that's most of the big differences for the chips themselves. I would also mention with the X470 platform there hasn't been many massive differences in this compared to X370 and it is fully backwards compatible so if you buy a 26 or 2700X as long as you have your X370 motherboard updated to the latest BIOS those chips will work in that board with no problem so that is definitely really nice even the, the B350 chipset should work just fine so that is awesome. Uh, the one thing to mention is that generally uh, we're seeing a few extra sort of feature upgrades as usual with these boards so you know more RGB headers and digital RGB headers more things like dual M.2 and dual uh, heat sink to M.2 and stuff like that um, and otherwise uh, actually in, in a lot of the boards that I've seen so far some really beefy overclocking and, and generally VRMs and VRM heat sinks so um, that is definitely pretty impressive and feel free to take a look at the full reviews of this the Aorus uh, Gaming 7 Wi-Fi also the ASRock uh, X470 Tai Chi Ultimate and the uh, ASUS uh, Crosshair 7 Hero uh, which will all be out in the, the week coming week or so so feel free to take a look at those if you want some more about the X470 platform and the boards themselves. So with all of that said I want to give you a couple of quick caveats before we jump into the performance results. First things first I won't be including overclocking results in this video because this is a launch video and I've basically just been having a lot of trouble with it. I'm going to do a full video in the week or so coming uh, both telling you how to overclock Ryzen 2 and the performance results that you can expect from it so feel free to make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification icon so you can be notified when that video comes out but uh, otherwise the other caveat is that all of the results that you're going to see here are with a GTX 980. Now yes I know that is in theory bottlenecking the, the CPUs the, the reason that's the case is the same reason uh, that it's the case for all of my CPU reviews it's the only card that I've benchmarked all all of these CPUs with specifically so if I want to be able to give you a comparison between the you know current and older Ryzen chips the other Intel chips that I have um, that's the only card that I have a full set of benchmarks for uh, that I can actually compare them to I would also mention that the other results you're going to see are old results that have not been retested as I don't have access to all the CPUs that are on the graph um, so there, there may be discrepancies, especially in the gaming results slightly, just because of newer drivers and updates and stuff like that. But otherwise, um, with all of those uh, disclaimers and kind of notifications out of the way, here are the performance results. Starting off with the Cinebench results, if you take a look at the bottom line with the multi-threaded results, you can see that the 2700X is actually the fastest chip on this graph. He would normally be beaten out by the 7900X but had to push that off for space and as you can see the 2700X does a pretty decent job too and single threaded they do a decent job of beating the last gen but not quite as good as Intel's offerings. In Asus Realbench you can see that again this is the highest score here on the chart which is definitely nice to see and even the 2700X does a decent job at beating its last gen counterpart which is a pretty similar story with 3D Mark as well. In 3D Mark, there's a couple of Intel chips that do a little bit better than the uh, AMD ones here, at least in the you know 27, 2600Xs. But of course, with overclocking results, you could easily see that beaten. So that will be very interesting to take a look at. And in gaming results with GTA 5, as you would expect at 1080p with, as I said, a GTX 980, we're looking at a little bit higher than the last gen most most of the time, but still a little bit lower than the Intel offerings. And in Dirt Rally. Again, we're looking at pretty similar results to the last gen, um, mostly just through the optimizations and stuff like that, uh, and we're likely going to see a little bit better improvements, especially for that 2700X, whereas, again, compared to Intel, they're a little bit faster. So, as I said, take, the, take my results with a, a pinch of salt, and definitely, I, as always, recommend that you check out multiple reviews for these chips to see other people's performance results and all that sort of stuff before you even make a, a buying decision or really anything else, but uh, I do think that they give a, a decent understanding that these chips are definitely better than the original Ryzen uh, kind of uh, Ryzen 1 or Gen 1 if you like um, but they're not uh, you know kind of the the amazing high flyers that you I guess some people might expect them to be this is an incremental upgrade it's Zen plus it's not a new architecture so while it's it's definitely nice to see higher clock speeds and stuff like that and especially that cache latency improvement which which could end up improving a lot it's still not going to be a massive 
a, you know, complete overhaul of performance and suddenly they're complete Intel killing chips. And that brings me on to the comparison between the current Ryzen chips of these uh, 27 and 2600 chips and say the 87 and 8600K chips. Now, if you are a gamer, technically speaking, you're still going to get better performance, especially at 1080p with something like the 8600K. Whereas if you are someone who's looking for a really impressive content creation machine, but also happens to want to game, then actually the 26 and 2700Ks are really impressive shouts. I'm actually really happy with these chips. I'm, I'm really glad that AMD has uh, kind of pushed the boat out in terms of what they can do with the existing Zen architecture and this nose of Zen plus architecture and improving things like that cache latency, improving clock speeds and improving even power efficiency to, to an extent. So that's definitely nice to see. Let's take a look at the score. Now normally I would score these chips separately, but I have to say that I'm really impressed with them and overall I think they, they kind of fit into their own categories and sit in the, the same position in each of their categories. So for me in terms of value for money, I think these are easily a 5. In terms of performance, I think they do a pretty decent job. I think it's probably going to be a 4.5 uh, just in terms of, especially in the gaming results, comparing to again something like the 700 k and 600 ks But in terms of productivity, it would easily be a 5 in that side. So uh, kind of just a, an average for you in terms of uh, functionality. I'm actually really impressed with them. So it has to be a five here. And in terms of the uh, styling, it's a CPU. So it's a five. Um, and in terms of the Titan Beauty score, it's easily a five and a top tier award. These are incredibly impressive chips and I highly recommend them if you're interested in a new CPU. So with all of that said, that is my thoughts and my experiences with them. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Are these going to be your new chips? Are you excited to see a the again swinging another punch or is this Kind of a little bit disappointing for you let me know in the comments down below i would definitely love to hear from you if you want to know any more about the chips or especially if you want to take a look at pricing when and where you watch this take a look at the two links that i'll have for each chip in the description down below and um, that will take you to a local amazon store where hopefully it has it listed already and you can see pricing for it but to give you an idea it's basically identical to the ryzen gen 1 uh, counterparts so that's definitely nice to see and otherwise yeah that is pretty much it if you want to support the channel help me make these videos on a monday wednesday Friday, Friday and Saturday basis, then feel free to take a look at the Patreon link where you can support me directly or take a look at the Amazon and Overclock GK affiliate links, which also massively help me out. And hopefully I can just go and buy some CPUs so that I don't have to worry about them, you know, being taken away from me and I can redo tests and actually do some decent comparisons in the future. But uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, feel free to, to take a look at those if you fancy. You can also take a look at the merch if you fancy too. I actually really like this jumper, so feel free to take a look at that. And otherwise, feel free to take a look at the other videos that are over here for you. As I said, if you're new to the channel or you want to check out any of these other videos that I'm going to be doing, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification icon to be notified of future videos. And otherwise, that's enough for me talking, and we'll see you all in the next video.